The next generation iPad Air is rumored to be getting the same design and even display as the current iPad Pro. So where exactly does that leave the next generation iPad Pro? Sponsored by Brilliant. I'm Renee Ritchie, and for everything you need to know about Apple's upcoming products, just hit the subscribe button and bell below. The iPad Pro got its big modern makeover back in October of 2018. Apple not only Thanos snapped off half the bezels, they gave it a squared off retro future look right out of the iPhone 5 playbook. The 2020 iPad Pro, released just a few months ago, kept the exact same look, pretty much the exact same everything, at least when it comes to design. And that, honestly, was kind of to be expected. The original 2015 iPad Pro looked like a big version of the iPad Air, which came out in 2013. The 2016 iPad Pro looked like an exact same sized version of the iPad Air 2. The 2017 iPads Pro, just a little bigger and the same again, all until the 2018 change. So five years for that design, maybe five years for this one as well. At least enough time for the iPhone to finally catch up. I mean, for people who use it semi-permanently on a keyboard, magic or otherwise, they may be itching for Thanos to just snap again and make the bezels even smaller, like somewhere near 100% screen ratio smartphone smaller. But very few people, at least on our Earth, have hands big enough to palm an iPad Pro like they can a phone. And for everyone who actually picks it up and holds it and uses it for multi-touch to draw or write with the Apple Pencil, bezels aren't the enemy and not all of them must die. About the only thing I really, really want to see changed is for the True Depth camera system to be moved to landscape orientation. To be clear, this so far has been rumored by no one. There have been absolutely zero in my dreams to love about it, but it's just so awkward in its current position, especially on the keyboards magic and otherwise, that I hope to Morpheus that Apple just does it anyway. I mean, it's where every MacBook FaceTime camera has been since beginning of time. And if you agree, just drop a comment and let me know. And for the iPad Pro cameras, I have just one consistent, constant request. Make them exactly the same as the iPhone Pro cameras. I know some people feel using an iPad to take photos and videos is just, I don't know, a crime against photos and video, but the iPad has such a big viewfinder. It's basically what pros do when they add mini HD or other large screens to our video setups. It's how we want to and need to see the video world. And the iPad Pro could absolutely be all of those things to all of those pros. All it needs is the iPhone Pro camera, the whole camera, the entire system, each year, every year to do it. The original iPad Pro, the one Tim Cook walked out on stage with in 2015, had a 12.9 inch LCD display. And compared to the iPad Air, it just looked so enormous back then, so immersive. The 2016 iPad Pro though, that had the same 9.7 inch display that Steve Jobs first introduced back in 2010. But with the DCI P3 wide color gamut, meaning richer reds, deeper greens. It wasn't until 2017 that the 9.7 inch became 10.5 inches, even as the 12.9 inch model stayed exactly the same. But both got ProMotion, Apple's adaptive display technology that let them ramp up to 120 Hertz for clarified butter level smooth scrolling and pencil drawing, down to 48 Hertz for properly cinematic movies and videos, and even 24 Hertz to save power for largely static images. And even when the big redesign came in aught 18 and the 10.5 inch grew to fill out those bezels to take the iPad Pro to 11, the 12.9 inch simply shed its own bezels instead, keeping the display exactly the same size. And the 2020 update has done nothing to change any of that. And while there've been absolutely no rumors about this either, I for one would love to see even bigger iPads as well. 16 inch, maybe more. If that interests you, let me know in the comments. The big rumor for the next generation though is decidedly small, that Apple will be switching from LCD panels to mini LED panels. There have also been some OLED rumors as well, but last I heard, Apple just still wasn't happy with OLED at iPad scale, namely brightness levels just not being consistent on those bigger panels. But mini LED offers many of the same benefits as OLED without having as many of the drawbacks. It uses literally tiny LEDs, like 10,000 of them below 200 microns in size, grouped into local dimming areas, so you can more precisely control the backlight and get those deeper blacks and higher contrast ratios. And that means, yeah, you can get HDR, high dynamic range, without having to get OLED. It's not the same thing as micro LED, not at all, because those are self-emitting. That means they generate their own light. 
like OLED, but without needing things like pentile subpixel layouts to support them. They can use RGB stripe like all good-hearted panels, and they should look even better. But that technology is further out, and will probably hit the Apple Watch first and then scale up to the iPhone, just like OLED. So mini LED for the iPad, which will be just terrific in terms of watching HDR content, especially with ProMotion, which should let it save power, then ramp up to 120 hertz for scrolling in the pencil. I literally cannot wait. Part of the iPad Pro's big redesign was the transformation from Lightning to USB-C. Blessed USB-C. It allowed the iPad Pro to just work with a far wider range of peripherals, Mac and PC peripherals. But it's not Thunderbolt because Thunderbolt requires PCIe and Apple just simply never surfaced any PCIe lanes for ports on any iOS device, not even the iPad Pro. Now, once again, I'm going well beyond the rumors here, but, but just last month, Tim Cook announced the Mac was switching from Intel to Apple Silicon, which is similar, if not the same, as a system on a chip they've been using for the iPad for this last decade. In fact, the developer test kit Apple's providing uses an A12Z chipset, the same chipset that's in the current iPad Pro. Then, just after that, Intel announced Thunderbolt 4. And just after that, Apple sent me a statement saying they would continue to support Thunderbolt on Apple Silicon. So, Apple is already building custom chipsets with PCIe lanes for Thunderbolt. At the same time, USB 4 is on the way as well. Now, USB is a standard, which means it just simply has to be super confusing, right? Right. To paint a very ugly picture, USB letters define the plug. USB-A on older devices, USB-B on printers, mini and micro USB on older mobile devices and headphones, and embarrassingly still some new ones. The number though, that defines the speed. So USB 3 is faster than USB 2, and USB 4 is gonna be faster again than USB 3. And that's totally an over grossly simplified way to say it, but to make it even simpler again, USB 4 is gonna give Thunderbolt-like speeds in a cable that uses the same USB-C plug. And it's gonna do that by just folding in the Thunderbolt 3 spec. So I'd love to see that on both the USB-C port and smart connector on the next iPad Pro. So the next generation Magic Keyboard could actually handle higher bandwidth data as well. And again, no rumors, nothing even hinting at USB 4 on the iPad Pro. Speculation like mine, tons of it. But as someone who's dying to connect a super fast Samsung X5 SSD to an iPad Pro, for 4K video transfer and actually have it, you know, transfer super fast, I want it badly. And just hit that like button if you do as well. Yes, a bunch of really salty pundits wrote a bunch of really silly hot takes last year saying the iPhone 11 not having 5G was just really super dumb. And now, almost a year later, most of the world still doesn't have functional 5G. So what's super dumb now? But since then, Apple and Qualcomm have settled their long running lawsuits and are actively working together on 5G modems for the iPhone 12. Rumor has it, sub six, and I'm secretly gonna hope for sub nine for the standard iPhone 12 and sub six or sub nine and millimeter way for the iPhone 12 Pro. And that's for sure the priority. The iPhone is always a priority, but once that's done, adding 5G to the iPad Pro just makes all the kind of sense that does. The 2018 iPad Pro came with an Apple A12X chipset, basically the iPhone XS chipset with seven GPU cores. But it turns out it was seven GPU cores because TSMC's process wasn't reliably turning out all eight cores yet. Flash forward to 2020 and that's just no longer the case. So Apple started shipping the fully operational versions as the A12Z for the current iPad Pro. Why not an A13 like the iPhone 11 or more properly an A13X? And yes, I have to doubt myself now whenever I say X or 10, cause Apple. My guess is the 2020 iPad Pro was mainly a delivery vehicle for LiDAR testing and Apple's silicon team was already beyond busy working on the A14 for the iPhone 12 and the new Mac silicon that's now on their plate as well. But Rumor has it the next generation iPad Pro will be getting that same A14. In fact, the GPU embiggened A14X version. 
It'll be faster because of course it will. And hopefully it'll have more memory as well. The 2020 iPad Pro has six gigabytes of RAM across the board, but eight gigabytes would put it on par with an entry level Mac, which will really, really come in handy if and when Apple ships Final Cut, Logic, and Xcode for the iPad Pro. And of course, even better, faster, and more flexible machine learning and machine learning accelerators as well, because everything is just utterly dependent on all of that now, from home screen widgets to the upcoming scribble functionality. It's simply the future of software. And if you wanna learn even more about how it all works, how neural networks are letting our iPhones and iPads do all of these amazing new things, then you absolutely have to check out Brilliant. Brilliant teaches you, for example, how you can wire up just 50 neurons to build a network that's capable of classifying handwritten digits, basically the foundation of what Apple's doing in iPad OS 14 today. Whether you're a student looking to get ahead while school's out, a professional who wants to brush up on cutting edge topics, or someone who just wants to understand, maybe even help change the world, brilliance there. They've got over 60 interactive courses in math, science, coding, logic and deduction, physics, quantum mechanics, game theory, cryptocurrency, and so much more, all taught through storytelling, code writing, interactive challenges, and problems to solve. If you're naturally curious and you want to build your problem-solving skills or need to develop confidence in your analytical abilities, Brilliant will take complex concepts and break them up into bite-sized, understandable chunks. You'll start by having fun with their interactive explorations, but over time, you'll be absolutely amazed at what you can accomplish. Click on the link in the description or just go to brilliant.org slash Renee Ritchie and sign up for free. And the first 200 of you can also level up with 20% off their annual premium subscription. Plus, clicking on the link just really helps out the channel. Thanks, Brilliant. Thanks to all of you for your support. Check out my iPad playlist for much, much more and see you next video.